I've nabbed my friend Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Jeff from Canada. Hi. Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. And what it is is Jeff likes talking about, well, the Aryans, don't you? Yeah. I've been looking at Aryan culture. Okay. Just make sure I put the speaker like that. Make sure that you're loud enough. Yeah. You, um, and also we just want to say that so we get this out right now. Jeff's opinion might be different to everyone else's, but Sun and Moon likes listening to the people, and the people have a lot to say. Jeff has a lot to say, and this is his version. And um, I like Jeff's version. Well, it's a, a version that I'm sort of looking at through looking back at history, really. So I guess there's different versions, but eventually there's really only one version that ends up being the truth. So... You know, I'm still asking questions and, and looking at things and putting pieces together, but it looks like we're all, we're basically predominantly either, you know, Aryan of an Aryan gene with a white sort of skin gene or of Aryan culture, which is, which just spread through this white man's race of, of slavery, basically <laughs> forcing people to convert. I asked um, you a question before we came on because. Now I've gone back and looked at a bit of history, even back to Edward III, and it probably goes back further than that, but Edward III, all the way through, probably Elizabeth I, Mary Queen of Scots, um, James I, um, even looks like Tesla. They're all darker-skinned people. Right, well... And you told it's... me a bit of information. Do you want to explain that? Well, when did, you know, how did, where did white people come from then? If there was all these black people around it, and it appears they sort of came out of the Middle East. And that's where, the, you know, the British Empire appears to come from Rome through the Byzantians and all that. And it's all Christian, which is Semitic, and, and from the Middle East, all their culture too. Mm. So, like, we, we might say somewhere like Ireland or Scotland, or, you know, where they have all these really creamy white skinned people with really red hair and lots of freckles. And we're like, well, that's predominantly from that area, Scotland and Ireland, but it's not, they, they migrated there from the Middle East somehow. That's what it appears to me anyway, through this Aryan race, they're, they're Aryans. Cause what I was saying to you was that Considering there's been a lot of darker skinned people around for a very long time, I don't even like using the colour thing. A couple of people have told me off, but I don't know what to do because they don't like being called this and there's all that going on, but I'll just say darker skinned people. Um, as there were so many of them, especially even in the royal family, they were nobles, they were all sorts of things. They worked, they were nobles, they were just the same. Maybe we were the slaves. Um, I'm just surprised that there isn't just one colour or, you know, there's still darker people and lighter people. Yeah, the pig, it's like a pigment of your skin, but it, you're right, it's, there's more to it than that. There's, there's DNA composition in it. It can't be just all skin pigment. And, you know, even the, an, an Asian man's sort of slanted eyes, you can see that in Eskimos as well in certain places. And, mm. if, you know, that could be sunlight. And what did you tell me that they did in Egypt, though? Tell me that bit. Well, tell well, us that, that bit. bit. About the white bread. Yeah, see this white bread thing, or the what then is it, they called it. And so they uncovered, there was a, a story, I'll just sort of skip through it, I guess, um, recommending that we all try and figure more out about it. But the Temple of Hathor was uncovered, and it was sort of discovered that it was more like a, an al alchemic, al alchemy, alchemic laboratory, basically. And it was all covered, had all this white powder in it. And it matched with all these hieroglyphics and stuff that they had where they would make this white bread. And they also called it, what then is it? And so in this area of Egypt, which was all sort of Semitic, is down close to Phoenicia, which was in there, what we call the Middle East now, Phoenicia and the Hittites were up top. And then the Aryans were the Persian Empire that sort of surrounded it up through Turkey and all that. And But from Egypt, the pharaohs appeared to be eating this white bread, which was for the nobles, I guess, only, or the leaders, or the pharaohs, etc., and they were, they would have all these wives and everything, and breed, they would breed with certain people, and, but the white bread, they called it, what then is it, and then they started feeding, the, sort of, uh, the Hebrews got involved, and they started eating it, and we know Hebrews sort of changed into to the Jews, or whatever, 
you know, there's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping through a lot, I know, but um, it, it's more about this monotomic gold because it was a, it was pure alchemy. And so it was basically like taking a gold bar and turning it into white powder with, mm. with, with basically no weight to it. It almost had, it had, it had said to have a negative weight, which is basically impossible for matter, right? So it had to do with the superconductor and the way that they did it with alchemy or the way that they made it. And it would magnetically charge the people that ate it. And so I was starting to wonder, well, could this make your skin go white? <laughs> <laughs> and that's and we, that we saw these Egyptian pharaohs with white skin, blonde hair, blue eyes. Is Did they eat it for that eating? reason? I don't know. That's why I was, I'm like, is that what made people skin go white? <laughs> it was this, what then is it? Right. The white bread. Yeah. I mean, I have heard, you know, like, um, Nigel lives in China. He says that everybody's there's all sorts of different it sounds horrible doesn't it because we're humans but everybody's different shades there yeah well at a certain point we um we even have different kinds of blood but like we're all human and so we're sentient beings whether we were come from a race that started earlier or later or whatever we still more or less have the same job as a human being i would think at that level mm. so that's why i don't even really talk that much about the black side i don't get too much into that i've looked into some moors and maoris and all that but i'm not black so people are just gonna you know have to accept that i'm white and i'm looking at my own culture <laughs> right if i want to pick my own culture apart then, then i don't i think i have the right to do that anyway <laughs> Yeah, because so, it's all political, isn't it? You know, and I, I, yeah. so I'm a bit worried about what I say as well because I don't want to upset anybody. Right, but you want to look. But we just want to find the truth, and yeah, you, you know, the truth is different to what we've been told. Yeah. It's so, crazy that it's all beginning to come out now, though, isn't it? Yeah. So about the Aryans, if we're talking about Aryans. Yeah, we're talking I mean, about Aryans. When when I looked at. We look at the zodiac and we see our days of the week. The seven days of the week are based off planets. Those are Roman. They were, you know, again, you're back into Rome and the Semitic. Uh, it was it was polytheistic, so there's multiple gods, but that changed into Christianity. We call that proto Christianity. And but the the Arians, Christianity started at zero at the with the age of Pisces, more or less, and. Uh, before that, the Aryans ruled the age of Aries. So now we're back into this Aryans, and we know what they sort of looked like with their thick beards and the Mesopotamian style. And they were all where the Aryan, the Iran is now Aryan, Aryan land of Aryans, and the Persian Empire were Aryans, and they migrated down south into the the Vedic uh, period that we know of in India, and they had Aryans and Aryans are all, all through India, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so there's no reason why these Aryans didn't just go up through Russia and through Tartarian. And the uh, Bavarians too through do you, Germany. Do you where... believe that some water thing has happened, and so maybe the lands were a bit oh. more joined then, so it was easier to travel then? We think, that... oh, there's all this water, and how yeah. did they do it? That's possible. That would. This is all beyond now. I suppose when you're getting into, um... I'm just doing the culture right now. Mm. So did they did they do anything with it? See, I sent you those pictures. Do you have any of those? Well, I'm doing using them now on the video. Yeah, okay, well, like, we, you can look at some of them. Those are from all over the world. Maybe later, uh, different time periods, but that whole horse idea comes out of this Aryan race through from the Middle East. And you can see in, you know, how the First Nations in America look very similar to the Hussars in Poland. <laughs> and they have the feathers in the back, and then... It, the you know, Indians, the Roman... you mean? You mean the native yeah. people? Mm. yeah. And, and, but even like the Russians or Canadians have Mounties now, and that's all British. Uh, but they're the, these horse soldiers, and they tie their little horse uh, manes. Well, those little... feathers on their backs, I mean, when you look at them, yeah. the first thing that goes through your mind is Indians. Yeah, but you can see in the... I sent... There's one of a, of a First Nations man with his headdress on and how it flows back, and it's got a symbol there on the side. But then if you look at an ancient Egyptian... Uh, horse and chariot with a pharaoh in it. They have like the horse has that on them. It's like the same sort of flowing thing that they had without with feathers and stuff. And in a sense, that shows me that the First Nations culture is that old. That's where they got it from. 
and, mm. and I hate to say this for First Nations because then they might want to uh, argue this, but their culture is not just belonging to them. We see it in Japan, we see it in Poland, we see it in Russia. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all over the world. But nobody really notices because it's so old. And we just, it's changed, And don't forget, they don't want us to know this. They don't really, although it's yeah, there, right. you've no, got a really, really together. hunt for no, this, no. haven't you? You've got a really, really hunt for it all. And they, yeah. But they don't really want us knowing about it. So they don't lie because it's there. But no. if you don't hit it, you're not going to find it, are you? Yeah, and now we have borders. And the borders are all changed. And so there, we're, you know, we don't even call these places the same thing anymore. We don't call Aryans Aryans. We call them Proto-Indo-Europeans. So if, I, if you go and look for information and something says Proto-Indo-European, you don't, you don't really clue in that that means Aryan. Those were the people that... Yeah, that we just all want the truth, Aryan, don't we? We want to know where we've come from really there's just there's just yeah. a big blank really because no yeah there just is well, that's, yeah and that's going to change again probably now because we're starting another new age and yes yeah, so i was world. reading about that even with richard the third the people had a um the black is it the black plague they had that and they were all stuck yeah. in their houses and you're thinking God, they weren't doing it to them then were they they, probably they were, had the yeah. same thing. Yeah. And basically, it's we're probably... still in the same era as then. Yeah. It what they call us. It might have something to do with alchemy. It really might. You know, when I looked at that last big explosion in, in Beirut that ripped through all those buildings and everything, it just totally looked like some sort of, some sort of alchemic process where they were burning, a, burning something that was releasing a chemical, and then they, you could see another type of smoke start to go in it and then they shot what looks like firecrackers into it and so the two chemicals mix and then you get this uh accelerant or whatever and boom you get your huge explosion it just looked like alchemy to me again <laughs> which you know comes out of this Aryan age of that we now call a conspiracy theory so it, we say it doesn't it's nothing oh alchemy is a pseudoscience we call it but that's what they use that's what 9-11 was too was some, some sort of alchemic process mm. So just asking, what what made you um, get into this then, um, Jeff? Uh, oh, all kinds of things, really. Like I said, uh, you, I could even go back as far as that Beatles stuff that I was talking to you about. And yeah, we were originally going to be doing a video right? on yeah. Paul McCartney and the Beatles. But... Touch on that briefly. Yeah, the reason why I I started, I got into that when I was like ten, ten years old, something like that. When my, I found a, an article in the newspaper about it. And how they had the Beatles had cocked up this big story, and nobody knew if he was dead or not. There was rumors that somebody from Peterborough, Ontario, had replaced him. <laughs> and there's a whole full page article basically on all these details about it. So I still have it. I found it inside my my album. So I mean, I could do a whole talk hour long. Well, we can save that for an, we'll save that for another day. But I do want to do that one, especially as yeah. you know so much. Could I just ask you something? Yeah. When you said that he was dressed in red and it was the Tsar of Russia. Which, which one were you talking about? Uh, there was a guy on a, on a black horse, one man on a plane on a black horse. What, with another white... man standing next to him? Yeah. That's that supposed look... to be the Tsar of Russia? Yeah. Which, which <laughs> Tsar? Uh, I think it was a Nicholas picture. But he doesn't. But he looks like he's much earlier. He's he's got like a seventeen hundreds hat on. Well, it just looks British to me. <laughs> right. But but he's that's got to be older than the Tsar of Russia because the hats are much older. They're like seventeen hundreds. You're right, and I did not check actually the date. I didn't check the period on that. I got that one recently. And p dating things is definitely important, but. You can don't you, don't you also find it really bizarre that do you know what the biggest empire was? It was the British Empire. Can you believe well, it? This it is, little country that we are, we had the biggest empire, and it didn't it's actually Rome. finish until the 1930s. Don't you think it all? It's all basically just Rome, and they keep telling us that the we don't know what happened to Rome, why it dissolved, but it's well. They said that the the Roman Rome. Empire on my video earlier on with I think it was with Amy. It might have been actually tonight. So I've done so many lately, I can't remember, but. The the downfall of the of the Roman Empire happened from the fifth century on, so that by the time you know it it's it's it goes it's been in decline, but how can that be if you feel that yeah, it's still here? 
Because the Holy Roman Empire is the Catholic Church. Mm. And we don't put two and two together. We don't put that together, right? So as the Crusades took place in the name of the Holy Roman Empire, it may have not been the, it was the English doing it, but it was still in the name of the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So we just said, no, it was the Crusades, it was the English, blah, 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 the kings, and all. we never mentioned Holy Roman Empire. So what, what do you make about when people say, like, people were sending me pictures the other day to say that Scotland was um, Jerusalem, and it goes on like that, and actually, is it, do you think that, because some people say well, they had all that in every country, or do you think that they've lied about, because, you know, if you look at, um, Nigel found out in a mason book, basically America was, it was Egypt. That's where the real Egypt is. Well, well we're, if we're talking about geographical locations, those stay in place, but then they move names and name them the same thing. So there's a Memphis in the United States of America, correct? Memphis in the USA. Yeah. Right. And so there's a plane too called the Memphis Bell, which is a famous plane that I believe it dropped up one of the first yeah. nuclear bombs. I believe. But you know what Memphis is? It's a place in Egypt where pharaohs normally lived for thousands of years. That's where that's what Memphis is. Right. So, but there's so there's two, and we recognize the second one more than the. We think the second one is the primary one, but the one in Egypt was the first one. Right. That's the. That's the primary one. So that's what they do. They change things, and we look at the ones in the 20th century as being the primary ones, and yet we've changed it already three, four times to become this. We just marginalized it all and changed it. That's why we don't understand what it is. Mm. I was looking at another one because I have a friend that's Korean, and you say a, there's a formal thank you that you can say in Korean. That's kuma wayo. And then, but something came up with, with somebody in Wyoming, and I was like, Wyoming? But that's Wyo, Kuma, Wyo, and then there's Wyoming. Is that like some kind of connection to a, an Asian language <laughs> in the United States for Wyoming? It just kind of blew my mind. I was like, wait a second, Wyoming? <laughs> yeah, and there's no connection, is there, to these things, which is a bit annoying, um, really. There is, obviously, to... yeah. There has to be. There has to be. Yeah, not that they're telling us. I mean, they're not telling no. us. Well, we know York is is English, and new there's New York in the USA. Well, do you know what I found out today? When um it, Richard the Third was on the throne, they didn't speak English. They spoke French here. Sure. Only well, the kings. Oh, sorry. Let's just check. Only the kings spoke English, but everybody else spoke the French. <laughs> How does that happen? We weren't run yeah. by France. This was just culture, right? This was the way it went, sort of thing. We a foot, the measurement of a foot, it was all imperial about the empire, and it was a measurement of the king's foot. And then every time the king died, we we had to either find this king with the same size foot or change the measurement, <laughs> right? So that's why right. we came up with other ways of doing it. So how did you get onto the Aryan part then? Um, it was probably Robert Zephyr that really kind of opened my eyes to that. Um, the anthropologist, he's a professor, he's a professional anthropologist anyway, and he was he connects Aryans a lot to different things, uh, Germany as well, and then I usually just go and study other things. I always check the Wikipedia page on things that I'm looking for, just for the official story. And the his story, my... yeah. I do as the well. Does it, that's all you've got, I isn't it? it? I mean, that's... It's, I don't think it's that bad that, you know, if you want just want information, but you never know how much of it's real, so right. how much they've covered up, that's the annoying part. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they even change in front of you. One will say one thing, you know, like he puts little bars up and it says... Who was the best king of England? Who did it? And you go through them, and the top one says one thing, and the fourth one down says something else. So they yeah. don't even cross check to make sure they've got the right information, to be honest. It's definitely biased, too. They mention conspiracy theories a lot. If something is, is a, if there's a rumor to it, then it, they'll label it a conspiracy theory and just basically trash it, <laughs> right? Which is nonsense. And there's things, again, that they don't even bother to mention about people that, you know, should be mentioned and stuff. I don't know. So this bit, this bit about the Aryans, what, what is it you want to say about them then? Because well, obviously sure the so many of us are into Tartaria cool. and... 
and all yeah, that kind of stuff. And I actually find it hard where that fits in because very just very quickly before you get onto the Aryan bit, if you, England had an empire and Russia has an empire and then there's the Mughals and then there's Ch um, other em there's other people and then you've got like how does this all work? You know, you've got the Barbary ships taking people. How does that work when we're ruling the world? And then that's got to be Tartaria. And I actually think it's the War of the Roses is where everything changed. And what it wow. is, is we know it as the Red Dragon and the White Dragon, but actually they're griffins, and that's part of Tartaria. So I don't know if I'm going to find anything, but I thought, well, I'm going to go and ha try and have a look and work it out because it's such a confusing period of time. There is one thing that we can do, I think, that I like to do. It's, it's a little bit tricky, um, but heraldry is a language I st I've told you about this before mm. and those symbols of in heraldry with the coat of arms and all that well the, that's what the nobles use to, to for their slavery and for the for the rankings and all that and so they're very the organized then weren't they you don't expect them to be so yeah, organized I said the one of uniforms no, I, I don't so. know if I you believe no the uniform. I'm not sure if I believe yeah. the uniform one it's a bit like getting action man you know and he's got yeah. all these clothes and Colors they just stick those everything. pictures up and then they tell us yeah. that that's the history but I mean, they were so organized. Are, yeah, um, the tinctures and the roundel is another one, and then you can go back into the Aryan age, two thousand years ago, and it was different heraldry. It was all different, but it was still heraldry in a sense. They didn't even have colors at one point. They just used like different shades of lines and in different directions to show color, and people knew what it meant. Okay, these pictures that you sent me, right? Because obviously, I'm putting up the picture. I'm whizzing through the pictures that you sent me. So, are uh, Indians Aryans then? Some of them, yeah. I mean, India is an interesting one because you'll get into a lot of arguments about Sanskrit. And you, Indian uh, religions like Hindu and Hindu and what was the oh Jainism are those are Aryan age religions. Those were around much longer than Christianity, and Christians don't want to admit that, right? Oh no, everything started when Christianity started, and Indians are like, well, no. <laughs> No, our religion was around thousands of years before yours. Like, what are you talking about, right? right. And they're right. They're right. Unfortunately, it basically puts Christians to bed because Jainism was around in 3,000, 4,000 BC. So that's like 6,000 years, 5,000 years ago. Mm. And Christianity has only been around for two. Or so even, even, even less than that because... We watched this yeah. hangout where they said that nothing was written down until the 1100s, and it all happened from the 1100s. So they've lied. They've added another thousand years on. So yeah. it's, that might not be in the right time, right space, right uh, anything. You know what? I still, I've heard, I don't agree that they've, they could have changed time, I suppose, but it's so difficult to do because they still use the zodiac, and that's the, that's how they time all the ages and everything and the dates and so they'd be screwing themselves up if they did that I, don't, I just don't see them they can alter history and what happened but i think changing the time frames th that would screw everything up well i think they, it's a bit like there's 500 balls in the thing and they're all in together and you've got to go in there and they're all numbered and you've got to find the numbers and put it all into the right and we haven't done that really they've just shoved yeah. the stuff out I mean, imagine That's now, beyond. after all these That's years, values. that there's a lot. Yeah. Now they're showing us pictures that the royalty and the noblemen were much darker skinned. There's something going on with genealogy because, again, with heraldry, you see bloodlines, and we show, they show us, oh, the bloodlines are the kings, and the kings, they, you know, so that they don't have to do anything, they would have keep keep their uh, children all in the family or or with other royals from other empires but there's always a main empire over the top and you can see that in the heraldry again with the colors and the tinctures and it all relates into heavenly bodies with colors and stuff and planets again so even though we appear to have multiple empires there's still going to be one above all the other ones at any given time at all given times i think so you could be a king but you're a king of your own land with a king above you that governs you still <laughs> which a lot of people right. don't understand I think that's what was happening in America Do you remember when we did the bit when I showed the map and there's kingdoms and then there was loads of kings here each county had a king originally yeah. well that's what they say you know like say say um, 
with Merlin and all that. What's that? Merlin and um The Knights of the Round Table. All yeah. that Barrett back there, Arthur. yeah. Or King Arthur, yeah. King Arthur. So that's the fifth I think that's sure the fifth that century. He he was around in yeah. the fifth century well, so they say. So yeah. there was kingdoms. Oh yeah, all kinds of kingdoms. still well, the United Kingdom is still around, it's UK. Mm. I've asked a question before, though, because uh, Israel was a kingdom, which is now a state. So people are telling me, oh, Israel has only been a state since 1960. I'm like, yeah, but it was a kingdom for thousands of years before that. So it was India. So they just marginalized it with by putting a flag on it and with heraldry and said, now we have now you have to abide by these laws. Mm. That's all they did with heraldry, basically, and make it made it a state instead of a kingdom. Okay, Which, I just want to ask you this. So, where's the relevance of the Aryan then? Because it was an entire age of 2,000 years that was ruled by them, their culture, their religions, and we see them transferred into First Nations in America, Indians in America, Polish, Chinese, uh, British. Um, basically, it's all like if you go back far enough, you're going to run into your culture being Aryan. So in some way, shape, or form, you just have to figure out when it started for you. <laughs> but it started when you were born, if you were alive now. But you know, for your for your own culture, because some of them, there were human beings that were living in South America or wherever, and were basically, in a sense, converted, like like the British did with the Crusades. Right, and so there was a period of time where Aryans were converting people, or they were killing you, and they were basically just splitting everything up with borders and saying, "Now, when you're done, you're going to go and fight them, and we're going to control, and they're going to fight you," <laughs> because that's Aryan culture. Where do you think it all fits in? Because there are different buildings. There's all sorts of different things, but there's one thing that we all have. We all have the pillar buildings. They're all over everywhere. We all have pyramids. So well, what does that mean then? If we've all, we must have been ruled by the same one person, you know, like one kingdom. Well, you, you can see on a lot of the Aryan Age pillars, they have the ram's horns on top in Roman and Greek and stuff. If you look on the tops of those pillars, if you those, see those little spirals on either side, that's mm -hmm. you, those are ram's horns normally, and that will show you that there were those pillars were made before zero, anyway, in BC, because they're depicting that sort of ram... Type of Do you think that's what they've done with like the Bible? Yeah. They made it look like BC, so it's so old and so long ago when it isn't, and they've stuck everything no. that we were is in the BC. They changed BC. They said BC was this. Yeah, basically in the book is the Bible. Yeah, but yeah, everything that happened in BC was just the Bible, what the Bible says, and that's just not true. That's yeah, yeah. You're right. You hit the nail on the head there, basically, and the Indian religions will prove that right and so will a lot of other things so will a lot of other cultures and so now christianity keeps converting everyone and the rest is history basically now western cultures everywhere we call it western culture and we think of that as american because it's in the west no that is christianity is western culture what do you make of of, of america being egypt it's well, even Memphis, like I said, Memphis is in America. It's a, just a, a spiritual connection because they're all Aryans, and that probably has something to do with white bread. <laughs> it's yes, all that's quite me. that's quite crazy. That is. Oh yeah, but it's all this culture of all all chemical uh, spirituality, and there's more truth that comes out of any out of religion because Egypt was basically the first religion. They didn't even have a word for religion, and heraldry is basically almost read like hieroglyphics in a sense, where it's just symbols. And so a lot of the spirituality got marginalized, I think, in Egypt, although they did a lot of discovery. In, on that type of stuff too, a lot of all chemical processes. How does that work when you've got all this, like England is speaking French and you've got the royalty speaking English? How how would it have worked? They wouldn't even have to have spoken to the people properly. They would have to speak to them in French. Yeah, language is really, it's a mystery to me still. And you know, the Bible tries to explain it with this Babylon theory. And Babylon could have been a real place, a real empire, whether or not the tower had anything to do with all. You know, it could be just a play on words, Babylon. But language is our voice, it's our power. 
And so it's hard to say if it's good or bad. It, you know, can you limit yourself with a language? Can you expand your, your Do you think this is the travesty of lying to us about our history, though? Because instead right. of just saying, we're all Aryans, they can't do right. that. Right. And we have like a, I, I looked on a thing in Canada and they said on the government website, they said, we can have this sent to you in 138 different languages. And I was like, what? what? We have that many? Why would you even... You know, can't we come up with something a little bit better? But do we need to? Maybe it's better that we don't, too. I don't know. Well, that's, that's the, na the national thing. language now is English, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we have two here in Canada. We have French and English. Do a lot of people French. in Canada speak French? In Quebec, they do. Do you think that's really weird, that we were speaking French here? The French in yeah. Canada. It sounds like French. The France might have ruled everywhere, not us. Well... A big part of the history that we are told involves the French fighting the English at the beginning of Confederation and all that, and fighting. But they talk about that they also slaughtered like a few hundred million natives at the same time. <laughs> and then at the end, the Union Army came up after they were done in the U.S. Uh, and helped them help the British Crown defeat the French anyway. And then they all agreed to give the French land and all that anyway because they're all on the same side. So. We're really looking at Henry the Sixth, right? He, his father, uh, Henry the Sixth. Can't remember who his father is now. He, he, he must have been Henry the Fifth. He won France and was going to be king of France, and he died. Well, they said a pain. He, he, although he had an illness and he died, it was a painless death. That doesn't sound right, does it? But he died just before he could have been king. And then his son comes to power and he's going, no, I want peace. But basically, when Henry VI came, he was a baby. I mean, I don't know how a baby is supposed to rule the country. So it was noblemen and all those people that did it. And then they blamed Henry yeah. VI for everything and said what a terrible king he was. But he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole concept. Of he was king. the only king to, <laughs> that was actually Lord. going to be crowned king of France. English, yeah. that is. Yet the it's French were here ruling us at times. In the War of the Roses, they were here and they were kind of king. And then we married, like, they, they married into the the French politi for yeah. political reasons Blood and stuff. Lines. And they used to sleep with each other and they have messed up kids and all that. And their kids would have three eyes or, or you know, whatever. They'd have their arm, they'd have defects, whatever. And what do you do? I don't know how far we have to go back. I just keep going further back to find out what the hell, where we all come from. Because this archon idea of king kingship is basically just slavery that's all that it is it's all bloodlines and i'm better than you because i because i have this blood and you don't yes yeah, so everything it's seems not... to be about slavery doesn't it we're not we've never yeah, been free. And they normalize it yeah and they say oh see it's good because we give you these things you get all this stuff and everybody goes yeah okay <laughs> it's like this it's like the just in case spell so just why have they case. lied then it's just foolery in a sense it's a it, you know, it's this low-level brain function, egotistical. They're manipulating the human condition with words and value. And they substitute things like profit and make, you know, things go backwards and people believe it. But their beliefs, oh, no, that's not the right way. It goes the opposite way. And people go, oh, yeah, really? And they go, see, you just made money. Oh, yeah, okay, good. That's called profit. Oh, there we go. So now you think you're doing it the right way and you just got suckered into doing it backwards. <laughs> Yeah. But no, I get money. But yeah, but see, you're not. You're. Where do you get your money? Are you stealing it? Are you? Do you need it? You know, can we do it any a better way? Is, are you getting value out of it, or is profit all your your only concern? Because I I still can. What when do we combine or connect profit, the word in money, to prophecy or the profits of religion? Is it a currency? Is money a currency? Is it actual energy, or is it just this made up? Thing that we call currency and it's not really energy at all <laughs> well it just seems obvious to me that they've totally lied to us all the time but i do know yeah. that you know whoever wins writes the history yeah i guess unfortunately and that's why they split it up you know in canada at the beginning of canada we had upper and lower canada there was an upper and lower egypt there was a you know 
they're they're always it always has to be two sides. So they come in where there's there's everything's fine, and they come in and they say, all right, we're going to split it in two. <laughs> you go this way, you go that way, you fight them, you fight them. One's red, one's blue. You can't have both. So you guys fight it out, and then we'll come in and we'll tell you which one wins. <laughs> mm. So they win no matter what, and they get to be at the at the top. That there's your triangle, your pyramid, too. So there's all kinds of ways of looking at value of how this how this works, but yeah, this pyramid scheme. It's like a pyramid scheme. Why the bottom is so always the largest? There's most people at the bottom, and the top is the one percent. So, mm. so we fall for it. We just fall for it. We agree to it. Comp compliance is a huge thing right now. If you're complying to wearing by wearing a mask, and you're complying to slavery, and you're just telling yourself that it's something else. You're going on your beliefs. It's not slavery, your belief is. Well, but it is still. Even if it's not for you, you don't feel like it is, it still is. It is. Yeah, because we, we think of a slavery as uh, 1935 in the United States of America when the plantation owners did what they did to the black people. So if that's not happening now, then it's not slavery. <laughs> well, that's the really sad bit is that I just feel that... Um... That even in America, there must have been a lot more darker skinned people, and they were there kind of first, and we're probably the settlers. Because whatever they did, you know, we've noticed that whatever they've done, whatever everybody else has called themselves, we have as well. It's all just, it's actually crazy. It's all crazy. Wow. That's an interesting point you bring up, though, because I'm pretty sure that, you know, through the Americas being South America, through Mexico, even, and uh, what we call First Nations or the Indians there, they weren't black, right? The, there was a slave trade as well that the Catholic Church had going on from Spain or Europe, which is Europe, by the way, is the name of a goddess, which I found out, and I can't remember which one now. But um, really, yeah. So it's like the stuff that we were told is just when that we could even find stuff out. There's information out there that we just don't know. Well, and, that's what uh, I'm saying. It's there. You've got to, yeah. even on a video, you, to, because of the way that YouTube have done things and the way that they're covering up everything up and even changing it under our noses, um, you've got to put exact words in to find it. If you don't, you might never find it, even on the internet. Yeah. It's most bizarre. Yeah. It's there, but somehow you've got to hunt for it. Yeah, and I found one day that New Guinea, or Australia, was, was run by Germans. And I saw the picture of how they split Australia up to an, an east and a west. One was New Holland, uh, owned, run by the Dutch, ruled by the Dutch, and the other side was, I forget what it was called. And But then I couldn't find it again. And it, I, luckily enough, I had saved it. But every time I looked for New Guinea, I always got New, the island of New Guinea, which exists now. But way back when, New Guinea was the entire island of Australia, and it was run by, it was ruled by Germans. And well, when, when so was that then? Yeah, I'd have to look it up again. Sorry, I didn't. Are we talking of last century or the century before? When are we talking? The, uh, I don't the know 1800s, the 1900s? A long time ago, obviously, before. Well, you'd have so to how come it doesn't easily. show up on the maps then in the 1500s, 1600s? It's just not That's, there. Well, there's another question that I might be stretching this with, but the, there's a place called the Gulf of New Guinea, which is way up. In Africa, like by Chad, on the sort of uh, western, southwestern corner where the, that little hump is, and it's called the Gulf of New Guinea. But yet, New Guinea and Australia are way down far on the eastern side. So I wonder if somehow, <laughs> if ever that piece of land split off from the bottom half of Africa and somehow got over there. I, I can't see that happening, really, but... I don't know why they would name the Gulf of New Guinea so far away from where New Guinea is. <laughs> mm. I don't know, you know, like my son's moved to Australia and, you know, it, where we are, Brighton's quite a big quite a big town and obviously I love it because there's so much history with a chain pier in the 18, early 1800s and first aquarium and the piers and the train in the sea. There's masses of history, and I grew up there as a child. My grandparents still live there, or and my dad's parents lived in Woodingdean, which is a, a, a small town on the other side of Brighton. Um, 
but where he lives in Australia now, it's called Bright. There's Brighton and Hove. Mm. But really, they're from here. They're, they're, that's the English connection, and um, obviously they're here. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe someone from New Guinea went over there and that. Oh, this is my part of Australia, and we're calling it New Guinea. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd have to go into it more. Like, that's the thing. It all takes so long to, to really look yeah, at Yeah, we're only... All we are... We're not, we're not historians. We're not here to make money. We're just no. average human beings trying to work it out. And I appreciate yeah. that you spend your time doing it and sharing your information. Jeff. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Okay. No, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Well, if I get any wrong, well, I'll ask for forgiveness and try and correct myself. How about that? That's the deal. <laughs> you said you've been talking all day today. So what were you doing today then? Trying to explain um, it to people. I called uh, our premier office. And Did you? To one of his assistants. Yeah. And I believe I called the Ontario Provincial Police as well today. I, I had two good conversations with two ladies. <laughs> And just kind of was, I just talk about things and, oh, why are we, why are we doing this? Um, did you know that we could actually just basically not follow your authority because we were basically marginalizing people into their own slavery? <laughs> you know, like they have to hear these words. I know they're, they're hard words to hear, but, you know, and, and they're probably going to deny it anyway and say, oh, that's ridiculous. But, you know, at least somebody's now told them <laughs> that, oh, they're, hello, I see this as slavery. Did you know that? Are you, did you know that people think that you're taking part in that? <laughs> and see what they say, you know, without going... I'm not, I'm not being horrible, Jeff, but a lot of us are hoping that things will collapse because what we've been put in is disgusting and they all need to go to prison. I know. All of but them. But I don't think it's going to do that on its own. That's the problem. We have to do something and somebody has to do something, but it seems like it's all the people at the bottom that are the only ones that are really worried about it and they either can't or somehow can't we can't organize because the people at the top won't let us we're all marginalized we're the minority or it's just they control people's beliefs they control the narrative too so people believe that it's it's fine it's normal you know i was watching movies again the other day with and people with masks on and it's been like this for a while so well, I was really shocked to see it in um, I was really shocked to see it in um, you know the history today when they said with the plague and everybody had to stay at home and all that and I'm thinking well that was what the 1500s and we're still doing the same things today which one? The Black Plague, I think, was a lot earlier than 1500s, but I could um, be wrong. Whichever one it was, it's in my video. Sorry, I've been doing so much, I can't remember yeah, now. There's, I think... there's different ones, uh, I know. But the, the Black Plague, if you got the Black Plague, you were expected to die in eight days. It wasn't that one, but it's plagues. They just made people yeah. stay at home, and I'm thinking, well, what's the difference today? They've told us that, well, you know what they've told us, and we're all stuck in our houses. But there's no, there's never any cure, right? People believe that it's just going to go away, and all we have to do is wear, get everybody to wear a mask on their face, and the, and the magic fairy will come along, and the, and the virus will go away. <laughs> the mask fairy will come down and make the virus go away if everybody wears a mask and prays to the fairy god of the, of the masks. You know, it's like that's what it is. It's a religious belief. It's just nonsense, but they believe it. Even nurses. I went by the hospital a couple of days ago just to see because it, uh, the media was saying again St. Joseph's was a, a terror zone and it was busy and all, the, all they had no room and I'm like I go by there all the time it looks dead so I went in <laughs> excuse me I went in without a mask on of course and they tried to say oh sir you have to put this on I said no I don't thank you very much I'm just going to go in and have a look around <laughs> oh sir sir I'm like no no it's okay if I'm fine thank you I'm not sick I'm just going to go in and so I went in looked did around, you film it all came over Huh? Did you film it? No, because I don't like to film people because that just makes it worse. That's a whole level of... Because I saw one today where someone went in and went, look, he just walked straight in and he was going, look, there's nobody here. There's nobody here. <laughs> right. I, you, I bring my camera so if anybody gets aggressive or whatever, then you can film. But I just went in to go and look. I wanted to see for myself if it was busy or not. 
and, 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 and see what happened. Let people know that, hello, we are in here. We're looking. So don't tell me that you're so busy and act like a big hero because there's nobody here. Right? And I'll tell them flat out. And she'll stand there, look at me, and I'll go, don't give me your gl gl glare either. There's nobody here. We know. Right? I'm here. You're here. There's nobody else here. <laughs> you're wearing a mask for no reason one second sorry jeff let me get rid of these oh that's it. it's gone now there's a couple of messages come up and as i got rid of another one came in but it's gone okay. now always well, got two messages for a while anyway now so Thought i got rid of the messages but anyway um so what does arian mean then by the way that is a good question you know that i don't all you have to do to find out is look up the etymology and it depends on how it's spelled too, because I think it may have been spelled different ways in different time periods. So you have to confirm that. But um, again, Proto-Indo-European is the word that we is the term that we not use now for Aryan. So um, you'd have to be careful because they're hiding it, right? It'll probably be a good look. I'll have to I'll look that up for the next talk. What does Aryan mean? <laughs> What does it mean for you then? Because obviously it's one of your subjects, it isn't it? I don't even want to get into that. If I don't know what it is, I'm going to look it up soon. I just don't have my computer open right now. Um, I can go look it up now. Do you want me to look it um, up? It's up to you, whatever. You know, you're asking me what Aryan means, and that is the way to do it, is what I'm one saying. One second then. Just up. let me go and get my iPad. Just two seconds. Here, I'll do it too. It's just in I'm my bedroom. Go. Hang on, two seconds. Pause for a station identification. Right, so oh, it didn't it didn't charge my iPad up, which is a bit annoying. So where am I looking then? Here, I'll look it up. I got it. Open. All, right. All right, you do I'm it then. I spelled it with a, oh, I spelled it with a Y. There's it's nothing like long. live research, is there? What has to do the, the word Caucasian is in there. German uh, philosopher Max Mueller popularized, popularized the word in his writings, Comparative Linguistics, recommending it as the name Indo-European, Germanic, Caucasian, or Japhetic. Japhetic, perhaps? Japhetic. You know, it's like a term from, uh, with a Y anyway, it says 1600. Oh, yeah, but, I see what you mean. A-R-Y-A-N-S-A-R... A Y R I N S A R I N S and A I R G U N S. Yeah. So it's a tough one to answer. And then if you look at how it's spelled with a Y, it connects all these other things like Iran. And yeah, it the talks word about Asian early Iranians word, here. Hindu. And yeah. Hindus, I know, are that. I know they argue it all the time quite profusely. There's the Ved Vedic period as well, which involves Aryans in, in India. So there's lots of recorded history on it. It mm. just takes time to go through it and understand it. This is one of my favorite tools now is this etymology dictionary, though, because it shows you, it just, I don't know, it makes you smart. <laughs> gives you meanings of things so you can use the words properly and understand what it is you're saying. No, I'm just looking up on my iPad, but it's a bit difficult because I'm not quite sure what I'm looking up at the moment. So I'll just, I've left it, to, I've left it to you. So, have we just been basically Aryans? Is that it, or do you think there's been other races here? No, I think there's other races for sure. Uh, you know, a black skin person or even darker skin South American, sort of what we call now. I don't think they were originally an Aryan race. I think Aryans were came out of the Middle East and they populated um, Europe, basically. Is this Prussia and, or uh, Iran? Yeah, both, mm. both Aryans. So basically we're Middle Eastern, really? White people, I would expect, yeah. Well, Christianity is for sure, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Semitic. <laughs> right. Russians are Middle Eastern, British are Middle Eastern, Americans, so Canadians would be, but I, I can't say that the First Nations are. You know, a lot of the native populations are darker skinned normally, and I would say that they were converted with culture. <laughs> Not, you know, without their consent. 
mm. uh, a lot of times without their knowledge even a lot of times actually it is with their consent and you know so i can't say that it's but it's bad because how do they gain consent is the question now you know we've built things as humans we have this civilization right we know of being we are more civilized because when people first started to populate america yeah there was a lot of that western um that again you know the the plains and just nobody had anything nobody had anything nobody had food and you had to live yeah the, the, land. the middle ages um wasn't a very nice time by the way it was a very poor it said very hard and you didn't live long that's what yeah. it said because it was they didn't have any food or anything right well they must have it's just i wonder again if that's just marginalized because they were always fighting well, right, so they can, say. We don't know if that's yeah. true, do we? We don't know if we were really fighting because well, if we were a mixture of people here, that's then we all live culture. together. So this thing about we racism do. is something that was done in the 1900s. I think it's disgusting. Mm, no, I think it's before, when we look at heraldry, that shows me that we've been marginalizing people into slavery for thousands of years. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is we've the Sorry, black well, no. people what they did to them and said that you know oh you can't sit on buses yeah. and all that they made that up then well black people were moving around migrating just as much as white people probably more so and and olive skin and different all different kinds of people that's the thing like this whole out of africa scenario of the human race has also scientifically been debunked it's impossible right so quantum theories show us that if a human race is going to populate a certain part then you know that will be going on everywhere on, in the world according to what that environment allows in a sense for life the very sad bit for me is though that the if, first if or second there, world, plants, world, world war animals, as to how they destroyed it they destroyed rome basically well rome you know, they let it go they destroyed it on their own they always destroy their own stuff all those buildings, so all those Tartaria buildings, they destroyed them all. Yeah. Well, not all of them, but they destroyed most of them. So it's even harder for us to piece it all together. Yeah, they bombed a whole bunch in the war, too. Mm. Well, that's what wars are about. They're not really fighting each other. They're destroying buildings and taking the children. That's two of the things. They probably put half yeah. a dozen other things in there that they can sort out as well. But And there obviously uh, yeah. is other reasons. But those are two of the, of the ones they were doing. Making weapons making them now that's a big part of it because it's a money maker so they want the money so they tell us these stories about how we have to fight each other and who's going to be our next enemy basically simply so they can make money making weapons yes and kill people. that's yeah. exactly what they do they plan the next enemy <laughs> for us put it all over the television yeah yeah because yeah, so, they've already sold them. believe you me they're getting ready for the next war now i would expect i wouldn't doubt to see it against aliens too they've got some technology 10 years 15 20 years we'll start to see the oh did you see more ufo spottings and then all of a sudden one day there will be on an attack oh my god and we'll be under attack by this invisible enemy called the aliens <laughs> <coughs> excuse me um yeah we'll other people think that as well and everybody will have to go to war other we've people spent... think that as well yeah, seventy billion dollars in January of two thousand and nineteen, the Canadian government gave to Lockheed Martin and Irving Oil to build sixteen warships. A fleet of sixteen for warships. For what? I don't know. That's what I've been wondering. <laughs> I've been asking people that for two years, and people go, "I don't know. What do I know? I don't care." I'm like, you don't care. Did you know <laughs> that um, in the eighteen hundreds, um, Russia had Alaska, and they sold it back. To Alaska, to America, for something like seven million pounds. Okay, yeah, I think I had heard something about that. That's just incredible, isn't it? What are you gonna do? I don't know. Yeah, I've been also hearing some stuff from Robert about these Nazi, um, this big, huge Nazi base that was built during the war uh, in in the Antarctica. And it's all underground. And the Americans found out about it, but of course they were still on both sides, right? So they sent a big force over and had a war in the Antarctica. Oh, is that what Admiral Byrd was about? No, no, this was more recent. This was the right. uh, World War Two, at the end of World, near the end of World War Two. But like that whole yeah, but he could have been exists. trying to find it or get in there. 
Well, maybe, yeah. But That's he if he went and he was me. real, because when I look at the videos, all it is is they've made the videos for you. They were going, oh, look, they're feeding the doggies. Oh, they're playing with the doggies. It's the most ridiculous right. thing ever. It's all been made for us. Okay, well, yeah, in that sense, it would have been Admiral Byrd first found something, and then Hitler found it later and expanded on it. But apparently that base is still there. It's a math, you know, it's probably even bigger now. And they do all kinds of weird research on space. Because they were supposed to have sub whatever it was weather down there originally, which means there's probably pyramids there and everything. Yeah, possibly. Uh, you know, it's hard still... to tell because you don't really know how big Antarctica <laughs> is. No, we don't have, pyramids are still a mystery. What the, What are they there for? I wonder whether they're a throwback from how they made us. Maybe they helped to make oxygen. I know that I know that I know that I do I talk to people who are really into it and they think that they're energy things they're making doing things whether they were I don't know it's probably to do with water and well it is to do with water but they were doing other things with them so that what I've just said goes totally against it but it just reminds me of the film Total Recall when Arnie gets there and he's got to put those ox yeah. oxygen machines on uh, yeah. That's what his aim is, to get there and put the oxygen machines on so that they can breathe. And, um, oh, the aliens put a whole system in. Um, and then he gets, obviously, Mars then has air on it. But I'm just wondering yeah. whether, you know, it's a bit like, let's destroy it all, or they'll never work it out. But actually, that's what's happening is that we are, and we suddenly think, you know, like, for me, there's a pyramid um, about an hour away from me. And there's, and, and there's two, actually. There's Merlin's Mound and there's Silbury Hill, and there's more, there's a couple more around there, and they're just not mentioned, and they, well, what were they doing? They've, they've got, like, yeah, rooms in the bottom going on. of them. You're right, what are they doing? There's something going on, and we don't know what it is, and they're not telling us. It's undisclosed. But so those things mystery. do have energy things on them, and they're still admitting, yeah. but they're just obviously, it's not connecting, and then, of course, we had the star forts. Someone was, um, I can't remember who was telling me now, but they, I think it was Nigel, they were 600 miles apart. They knew what they were doing, and they put each star fort 600 miles away, 600... So they knew what they were doing with those things. Star forts remind me of something that has to, was happening in the, in the sky. Like, it has something to do with the Star Wars. It's like a war... Well, yeah, because the that's where... Yeah, that, I think that's what they did. That's how they knew where to put them, because they had, they had to do it from yeah. the sky. Yeah, Alan's a good guy. <laughs> Alan's funny. He's he's got a lot of uh, knowledge. Unfortunately, Alan's an atheist. <laughs> oh, Alan in our group, you mean? Sorry, Alan. You mean Alan, Alan in our group? Yeah, he's got a lot of really good looks. There's a lot of good. Uh, oh, Alan's lovely. Uh, he's a right oh. sweetie. He is. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he got me started on the on the liquid thing, and everything's made of water. And so I've been contemplating that. And so I saw another thing on where a different man was trying to explain how um, rock is all alive, basically. <laughs> In a sense, he, it was very hard for him to explain it, but he, he was explaining it as tissue. And, and in a sense, if you look that rock as possibly like, like a bone with marrow in it, and a, and a bone, after a human dies, the only thing that's left is bone. So everything else Oh, you probably... mean, when we're looking at all this rubble, like little bits of rock and that, what you don't realise is that you're... It's a lot. It's other things, like bits of body, bits of this. Because I do, do know yeah. that I was watching a video it's today that someone else. sent me that things can petrify quite easily, even bodies in the ground. As if water's running through, these things petrify. But it's all cells. It's all liquid is what, I guess, what Alan's trying to say is that if everything's liquid, then we're all just blending in with, with other liquids, heavier liquids, almost like a B-52, the way it, you know, and we're all locked in a quantum field. So well, it's a, even a, a worse than that, isn't it? We're living in a totally electric place. The trees are electric. The sun's electric. Not sure about yes, the Yes, that's energy. Um, but the quantum everything's field electric, is what which we means are. we should be able to live here. We should be able to live here. And we've got an electric pulse in our heart and our brain. I mean, like, what is this? I mean, nobody, you know, as you're walking around, you don't think, oh, I'm living in electricity, but you are. Right. And so where does that, do we generate? See, if, if there was a song by Jethro Tull, you remember him? The song called Aqualung? Yeah, I saw him at Glastonbury. Yeah, so, I mean, has he had a song called Aqualung? And it wasn't really about breathing liquid, but what, like, what is it that? If our atmosphere, let's say, was a liquid instead, we picture 
Well, yeah, we're, we're breathing in watered down water. Well, it's a different type of water because water, water, sorry, has hydrogen uh, molecules mixed combined with the oxygen, the H2O, so two hydrogen, and, a, and there's a superconductor in there somewhere holding them together. But the oxygen is also a liquid with oxygen, our atmosphere, but doesn't have two hydrogen molecules. So well, I think it has to be a bit damp, doesn't it, because of our lungs. Like, if there was no water in it, it might be harder for us to breathe. We need that little bit yeah. of water in there for some reason for our lungs. Oh, well, there's oxygen in it. Anyway, we yeah. can breathe oxygen, because, but humans can't breathe hydrogen, and that's why we can't breathe underwater. But and also, so also there used to be more oxygen here, and they're saying when, there was, when we had a higher level of oxygen, you could run for miles and not feel tired. You can, um, oh, there's just so many things and, that can happen. You heal quicker. That's why hospitals give more oxygen to people because it you heal quicker right yeah and they don't want that do they, they don't want us to heal quicker <laughs> no i they must admit i must but... admit you know like maybe maybe 10 15 years ago you're thinking oh hospitals they look after you now you think well i don't want to go on a respirator i don't want that and i'm not having that and i'm i'm only right. going if i'm seriously ill now that's what i've said to myself i'm not going anywhere near them i know you know, yeah, what's, uh, what's chemotherapy, mustard gas? So what have they been doing to us for years? Yeah. And my mom, even though she was a nurse, and my dad too, they came from this sort of generation where they had nothing. And then all of a sudden they were able to have things and all this, these choices, so they didn't give a crap what they were putting in their body. They really didn't. And my mom's kind of the same way. She's like, oh, well, who cares? If I, something happens to me, I'll just take some pills for a while and then I'll die. Yeah, because, <laughs> you, know, that, you know, we've grown up with that, haven't you? Just take a pill, it'll make you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, but it doesn't. Take a pill and you'll, you you die quicker. Mm -hmm. That's what we're learning. And I, I think I think that's... We, we're not going to get into that because we're not talking really about that. But I think that's what the mistake is. Because they, even though they said stay at home, they actually wanted us at the hospitals and it's not happening. Everybody is staying away. Yeah. I think... I guess they are. But the media says... If you don't go... Oh, home, yeah, it's cracking. The hospitals are bursting at the seams. No, yeah. they're not. No, but if you don't go and look, you'd believe the media. Yeah, well, unfortunately, my children believe it, but I've been to the hospitals yeah. myself. There's no yeah. one there. In the last one we had, there was nobody there, just like people are reporting now. But yeah, we have to change the subject. The we have to change the subject in a moment because, well, you know, you know what YouTube's like. All right, you know, I don't know. I guess we can we can call this one a, a night too if you want. Call it <laughs> what? Long hmm? Call it what? what? What did you say? I don't know. I, I, we could call it a night too if you want. Oh, yeah, I but... say you've had enough now. Well, whatever. What else do you want to talk about? I don't know what else. I thought you were going to tell me a bit more about the Aryans. Well, um. Finish off on a bit of the Aryans. I'm just sort of on this kick where that we were all Aryans, and it's it's right sort of centralized from the Middle East. So our culture is Semitic and and Middle Eastern. So I, I don't want to take it too far with that, with you know, beyond in, and start making assumptions on what else comes from that, because there's always been multiples, and we all, you know, nobody's the same, and but not knowing that is missing out of who we are. So if more people were aware of the history from that time period that we have and that, that how it relates to us, then we can make decisions better. Uh, that, that's the way I feel anyway, because there's more to it than that, Because, but um, that's a start, because then we can look at what, what we're doing. You know, how we say things backwards and stuff. We do, we say things, my mom will tell me that, you know, say words and then turn right around and say that she didn't say that. <laughs> you know, I'm like, right. what? You just said, you know, or my friend Mike, who is on the ball with the truth for the most part, he's, um, but like he'll go out and protest and, and wave flags, which I find that a little disturbing that so many people will wave flags and sing national anthems and say, oh, oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee while they protest the government that is making them slaves. It, you're waving flags in, in promotion of that government, 
and protesting them at the same time. Yeah, Jeff, that's the one thing. When you wake up, you realise that you can't follow any of that stuff. There's no blue or red flags or them or politics. They're Not all part point. of that system we don't really want anymore. Well, if you want that, that's fine. I, again, I don't want to change people's belief systems totally overnight, but you have to combine the two. You have to connect them and understand that when you vote for those people, this is what you're going to get. Any like, one of them, them not just the one yeah. that got in, any one of yeah. them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, once, yeah, once you vote them in, well, they can do whatever they want. And they're going to change your laws and all this stuff. So if you don't care... Well, you know, I can do that one for you on etymology because government, obviously that meant means mind. So it's govern the mind. Yeah. So you govern your own mind and tell them. The government is supposed to be run by the people. That's how Yeah, the so that's the bit that... Form. it's, But it's turning around into their god. Yeah. Oh, very quickly, you've put in your photographs the picture of the clock. What was that about then? That was the oldest um, Zodiac clock that's still functional, I guess, or available. So that's a clock based on the Zodiac. And why that's a, kind of weird, it's got the three faces on it and everything. But, you know, we don't really even clue in that the clock, like we use digital clocks now and they show us numbers, but everyone used to have clocks with hands on it. And we just kind of assume, well, that's just, you know, the way we made it go around. But it, it's, in, it's in relevance to the Zodiac again. And how everything spin, how the planets and everything move around. So people that you know, daily horoscopes seem to be coming back, which is kind of dumb because daily horoscopes are a bit of a farce. You can't track daily futures with with the zodiac, but we do use it for days of the week and months and ages. And then people, by the time they get out into these two thousand year ages, they're like, oh, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't make a difference anymore. And well, yet, if you get into astrology right just now. a little bit then you realize that the stars are always doing things and those conjuncts or whatever's going on or when Pluto's lining up with, um, Pluto's Planets lining up with, um, I can't think which planet it is now. Uh, I think Alan, Alan was right on that. And he said that there's a pole star, which is Polaris, which is the North Star. So the stars all revolve around a pole and the planets move and align and disalign, but the stars don't. They might move a few degrees and such with the tilts, but there's a pole that the stars revolve around. They don't move. Yeah, so there we are, floating through space, doing Mach 80, going on and on and on, and all the stars stay the same. Mm. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, but what it is, is it, don't you think it's amazing that all that time ago they were using those kind of clocks with astrology? It just seems that these people are far more intelligent than we are. Oh, you know what? Another thing I was thinking about, too, about the stars and the war on the stars, the Star Wars and all these star fortresses, etc. One of the things that we do now in like the 20th century that we never did before was light the sky with our skylines of our cities. And so that all that ambient light from all over the world, from all the power at night that we shine with our lights, takes away from what we can see in the sky. And so we can't see all that stuff anymore because before before we had electricity, it was always very dark at night over the whole world, so there was no ambient light. Mm. So they could see further. Mm. They could see more. So that's just a difference in, in how we, uh, how we per, uh, perceive things. So we light the sky now. Great. Mm. You know, is that a, another war on the stars? You know, is that the aether? Is that what, we're, what we want to see at night? Should we not be lighting the... the... <laughs> Do we want to see the stars more? Does that make us more conscious of who we are? Well, it's quite incredible to think that they were using it all that time ago. And, you know, like, it's just, yeah, they were just far more... And they were always looking at the stars. Churches started off as observatories, basically. Yes. They were looking at the stars. They were not churches. No, and then something else that got me, it. listen to this, this is just changing the subject a bit, but, you know, uh, Westminster Abbey looks very like the Notre Dame, they're not quite the same, but there are other okay. churches in France, they are all the same as in England, yet no, in England, no, they're the Church of England, and in France, yeah. they're Catholic, yet they're the same churches. Okay. Catholic, but the, the church style, I find that we called it Gothic, do we not? These Gothic cathedrals? Yeah, but how does that work when you've got the same churches here as in France, 
but the ones in France are Catholic and the ones here are Church of England. And we already know that in the 1500s... No, the Church of England is Catholic still. The Church of England... Well, no, it's, it's supposed, it to, be di it's supposed to be different, but, the, oh, but with Henry VIII, then, yeah. Henry VIII, he changed everything, and that was in the 1500s. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we still have the same churches, but in different religions. Mm -hmm. I know. And that does get confusing again, but that's religion. And that, so we look at Hindu and, and they had Jainism and then Sikhism popped up in the 20th century and they're all from India. So it happens with religion. They always just change and they add things so that when people get wise to it, they just change the belief. And they say, well, it's just a little bit different. <laughs> and, and then they can have another branch of that religion. Because, you know, everybody goes on about obviously Jesus in a sense to the rest of the religions is quite a new one. You know, that the Bible but basically, uh, Henry VIII is an even newer one. Well, the, uh, the first Bible, the King James Bible, was put together by that guy Bacon, who was the author of all the Shakespeare stuff. Mm. You know that? Mm. Yeah, so he wrote it. He assembled it and translated it. It had to be translated and interpreted from uh, Hebrew scripts. So I don't think that's such a good Bible anymore. You need, you, need, you need the proper Hebrew translation, not... One of the ones Why? they've done since and changed a lot of the words in it. It's all just scripture anyway. You can use it if you want to, to date things and to get some period pieces, but it's allegory and it's it's basically for beliefs. Again, it's to marginalize people. Yeah. That's what I would say. You know, Christianity popped up out of other religions and there were other religions before that. And they're all control devices to marginalize. That's what I see. I, I don't think you need another book to get to yourself. You have to do it yourself. It's all marginalization. And I still think that, the, you know, what some of the old Taurus Age religions talk, talked about the Aether, and people still talk about the Aether. So maybe the Aether, may, this, if this concept of the Aether has anything to do with the stars and they revolve around the pole, I mean, maybe there's something there too. I don't know. But we'll never know. It's, just, it's always going to be. No, because the stars, I mean, you know, like, you know, I can't believe that I thought they were millions of light years away. I don't know how I thought that when they're only a couple of miles away, if that. The problem is we just don't know, <laughs> unless you're going to go up there and look. Well, then, what it is, is what we're looking at doesn't look very far away. Um, they're not very far away. That's why you can go on an aeroplane and go above them and don't see them. But uh, uh, you can't yeah, ever get I... to them. They're luminaries. You can never get to them. You can't get to the sun and you can't get to the moon. And all right, that happens is just, the moment you try can't. to go towards them, they just get further away. Right. Yeah, so like, well, how can that happen? How, how, how can that happen? They, they don't move. Don't forget, they don't move. You have to have your principles down. They don't move, so they're not getting. They're gonna they're not gonna move away from you. But you're right. As you get closer, if it's just energy, you might see it differently from far away. And you know, a lot of times for us to see them, there's a reflection of light off it. Mm. So there's all these other factors. But we don't know what stars are because I was always under the impression that they were solid matter, like a planet, like a small planet, like a moon or something, like smaller. But now I don't. I think it. They appear like it's more just like a ball of energy, like it's not solid matter. But it's hard to say because cameras can do different tricky things, or they might not be focusing right with the light. So it's hard yeah, they to look say. like they look like little sort of bright blobs. But actually, when you zoom in on your camera, you can see that they're changing color and. Well, yeah, but the camera might be doing that on purpose, might be changing the look just because of the lenses and the way it fixes on light. But people do say Plus, God made it so that, or if you want to look at it that way, God made it so that we didn't know the truth. We're never going to know the uh, truth. Well, it's not up to God. That's what I keep saying. Everyone thinks, oh, God will tell us and God will touch you and this and that. I don't really think it works like that. I think it's up to us. You know, like we have, we're men and we're women, and then there's plants and there's animals. And, you know, plants are, are, an, are a sentient being. They're conscious of themselves. Flowers know how to open up when the sun comes out, and they know they have to open so that the bees can come along and all that. But it's almost like they know their role, but they can't ask why. So humans have this capability for holistic intelligence, and we can ask why, and we can answer the question why, but we don't seem to know what our role is as human beings. We think it's just to enjoy life and make money, mm. right? But plants don't, you don't see, or animals, they, they don't, they seem to have a role that, I don't know if they know what it is, but they, they know they have a, they're self-conscious, they have to eat and they have to hibernate and like they, but they don't ask why they do things either. They just kind of roam around and do it. Like mm. they know what their role is. 
we don't seem to know what our role is. <laughs> As humans, our job, we all say, well, what's your job? We should all have a base level of understanding of what our basic job is as humans. To First. be a slave, Jeff, to be a no, slave. It's, it's, you know, it's like to look after or to protect people. Yeah, because you, you are an individual. You go and do your own sort of, what do you call it, uh, activism, and you're a person in your own right. So when you look out, that's how you see it. But a lot of people are in the herd, sheep mode. Yeah, but they just don't care. They're confused, is what I say. They're conf they're in a ball of confusion. Their soul and their spirit and their vessel. Well, we not, we did a bit about know, that. I don't know if you watched it with Nigel. Basically, there was the giants and the Elohim and all that kind of stuff. They were directly they uh, their direct um can't think of the word now um divine connection to God, and then they okay. made Adam and Eve um to be their slaves. But they weren't very nice people and they got kicked out. But the mask wearing people are them. And then you've got the awake people and the um, empaths. And they are a hybrid that they made with connection to God. Or whichever way you want to call it. Spiritual, the whole thing. Um, whatever it is to you. And um, those are awake. They, they're, they're different to the... Those ones are awake, but that. Adam and Eve, they cannot, they cannot follow you. They cannot do it. It's like we were given spirits, but they weren't, because they just right. cannot break free. And so that's why well, that's it's, a, it's pointless trying to wake them up, because you're never going to wake them up. And they're never going to get it. Well, but uh, you think? Mm. No, I think it's true. Even my own children, they, they cancelled Christmas for me. They cancelled. My son cancelled a, a meal just before Christmas. My son cancelled Christmas Day because of the virus, and um, you know they think they were doing the right and all that, and they've got so, like it's not anyway. We know what it doesn't even exist. Well, so. here's the thing that you can do with Christmas is ditch it, let them ditch it, and then you don't have to have a Christmas meal once a year. You can have meals together with your family all the time. No, they don't want to. That we're on a we're on a quarantine right now. No, not right now. I'm saying when it's over. But no, I, they, I don't they, like they, they don't. They they want to believe it. They want to believe all that. Yeah. They, you know, like when when you when you're like you and me, to that to them we're like foreigners. It's too foreign for them. Right. Well, so they get they feel that they're obligated. Yeah, they feel threatened by me, yeah. even though I'm just telling yeah. them the truth, and they can't break free from this system, this money oh. system, ego oh. system. I think that's the saddest bit, Jeff. That's the day. saddest bit with the egos and the money and that basically people can't get on. And we're here. One of the big things when you're an empath is about you care about everybody and you feel everybody. We should be more, I'm not saying everybody has to be like that, but it's better when you're like that. You're more aware of what's going on. These no, other ones, yeah, they're not aware funny. of anything. All it is is me, 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 and they've turned everybody into narcissists. Anyway, yeah, that's just that's... changing the subject, but... Um, no, yeah. not really, because you were, you know, we're kind of debating whether or not people can be changed or, or if they can change themselves. You can't change a can... narcissist. Once they're one, they're there for life. No, and what's and they're just nature, making a very though? narcissistic society. I don't know. I was looking at this, some of these uh, magic spells and stuff and uh, weird sort of uh, beliefs, but, you know, they were talking about... Um, this one was like growing eyes in the back of your head. Mm. And obviously you can't grow eyes in the back of your head. It's all, it's all uh, uh, allegorical again, like your third eye is in the, is in the center of your forehead. Mm. But you can grow eyes in the back of your head if you're trapped in something and then you can walk out backwards, right? So you can actually free yourself from a spiritual trap or a spell if you go back in time or like even doing something like maybe like learning another language would help you because you're you're basically starting yourself out as again as a student and you have to relearn things and you're just training your body to relearn things so if you get caught in a spell or like by a culture in mainstream horseshit and you you're, you find yourself a different person we'll go learn another language because that forces you back into human nature how to learn things basic from human nature side instead of culture mm. You know, or grow eyes in the back of your head and literally walk backwards. My feet, my, I swear I did so much walking before 
sometimes my feet, I, they don't they crack over and over. I'm getting old and my feet are always cracking and they get really stiff, but then I start to get calluses. So sometimes I literally walk backwards to train my feet to know how to walk properly. Just that motion of walking because they get stiff and then I, I don't pay attention to it anymore. So if I walk backwards, then I train my body to do it automatically without me thinking of it. Right. Does that, does that make sense? Like yeah. literally, because there's a there's an element here of forwards and backwards in this world that we don't know. We just think, oh, I just talk I talk English forwards all the time, but I don't think we do. <laughs> you know, Oprah says it too. Harpo is her product. There's an element of backwards that we're not that we're missing that we should be somehow utilizing. Oh, wouldn't you just love to know the way it really was and what? And unfortunately, what we're living in now. Yeah, with all the technology too, that would be good. Like if we had all our past spiritual knowledge from 5,000 years ago with the technology that we have today, because we didn't, I don't think a lot of the technology we have today, we didn't have back then. Not that we need it all today, mm. but you know, certain things if we, if we could have had it back then as well with the spiritual knowledge, I think it'd be a lot different. Because we seem mm. to, as we get further and we grow with philosophy and technology, we seem to lose these spiritual contexts and the spiritual knowledge. So, is that a, a natural trade-off? I don't know. Is that a natural balance? I don't think it is, really. Well, and I suppose it's only getting half the story, isn't it? All the half the history. Yeah. yeah. And we see uh, humanity changing again with this transhumanism where they're we're trying to get us with chips and if they're putting nanoparticles and changing our DNA, mm. what is that going to do to, to society, right? Not good. If that's what they're doing. I don't, we'll find that out, I guess, slowly but surely. Well, we've been going for an hour and 20 minutes now. Is that enough, Jeff? Have you had, en have you had uh, enough I, now? <laughs> yeah, so, mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you coming in and talking a little bit more. Hopefully, people understand a little bit more. So, just before we go, like, what what do you do? You're just going to carry on researching it, then? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I don't know what I'm what I'm researching now. What do I, I have like four things open probably on my computer, or more than four or five, like normal. Uh, I was looking at row that language that they marginalizes with courts. Uh, a whole bunch of Aryan stuff. The white bread is open. Yeah, that was very <laughs> interesting. Thank you for that. Symbols are open. And the, re Again, the reason you sent the picture, some of it was the fact that, because obviously there's a, like a, well, I don't know what he is. He's not Chinese, but there's like a Malaysian man on a horse and he's very light coloured. That's why you sent it, isn't it? No. Yeah, he would have been an Ira Iranian, and the, but he looked. That guy looks exactly like the Japanese and the and the and the Hussar, the Polish guy. They look the same, and they're from, you know what I mean. So that's why they're all, up to me. They all look. It's the same culture. Do you think that's because we've interbred then with everybody? I don't Just know. culture. It's a belief. That's why we all hold the same beliefs and religion, or somewhat close to a the even see Islam and and Christianity. Islam to me is Christian. It's Christian, even though it it deals with the prophet Muhammad instead of Jesus. It's still the same scripture as the Jews, and they just changed it a little bit. The same symbols, same ideology, different stories, different characters. I was looking at this Starfleet thing too. Speaking of symbols, and this alien stuff that they're because there was a guy from Iran or somewhere in the Middle East in Saudi Arabia. One of their leaders was saying that, oh yeah, the Americans already have a base on Mars. <laughs> Um, and right, and but then you look at some of these symbols for what they have a thing now called Starfleet Command, right out of Star Trek, but it's an actual United Federation of Planets, and so they're putting this stuff together, and they're not really telling us again. You know, there's a the United States Space Force; they're putting that together, and it's got Roman numerals on it, by the way, and it also has that one little piece from uh, from the Maltese Cross times four. And Vulcans, I found out, are at, were actually, were they in the Bible or were they were actual real people or something like that? Vulcans? Like Mr. Spock? Not really. <laughs> yeah, the keepers of the fire. Oh, golly. Yeah, so that, it's going to, I think we're going to. So you've got lots of work to do then and more research. 
Well, yeah, and we have to wait and see what they're. I think we're gonna we can expect some alien, some sort of UFO. Activity. Yeah, you're not the only one that thinks you know? that. I don't. I I don't know. Don't know. Ten yeah. years, maybe. But maybe it'll be ten, twenty years though. Might be twenty thirty. Mars mission. Mars is the god of war. You gotta think that way. Maybe mm. not. Can't see the future. Don't know. And you do all your anyway. research on your own, don't you? What's that, sorry? You do all your research on your own, don't you? Uh, well, no. No? Not in a sense. Because, well, no, because um, I get a lot of my information from about culture from an anthropologist. So he goes out and looks at a lot of this stuff and then does reports on it. But he does so many, and then you have to. I have to go and be, you know spend hours on listening to what it is that he's showing you. And I like Robert because he he's not always right. I don't take I take everything with a grain of salt. But he does his reports and is very in a very unbiased manner. He doesn't try and sway you. He just says this is what it is. This is what the lore is. This is what I saw. You decide, <laughs> right? So none of this media garbage going. Well, if you listen to me and do everything I tell you, you have everything you need to know. So it depends on who your experts are. Mm. Well, I really enjoyed our chat, Jeff. Thank you, me too. Thank you so much for spending that time. I thought you were going to talk just about the Aryans, but we did cover a few other subjects, but that's fine. It's all related, yeah. It should all connect. My mum says to me sometimes, oh, you're talking circles. I'm like, no, it connects. That's the thing. It should connect. <laughs> mm. Well... Thank you so much, Jeff, Thank you. and chat room. All right, Karen. Take care. See you later. All right. Don't go. We're gonna. We'll say goodbye off air. You know when I've pressed okay. the button. Okay. Right. So yeah. just for the hangout. Bye, everybody. See ya.